Hey YouTube, and it is Trinity Productions bringing you another video. Also, those subscribers on our Facebook page for the Ingenia and ES series speakers, this one is for you as well. Um, we have got one of the brand new um, ES series 1203s. This is a all-in-one column speaker system with a really awesome um, low frequency subwoofer box um, that is underneath of it. This is the box that it comes in. It's almost too tall to, to fit on the, the screen. And um, we've listened to this and it is absolutely amazing. What I wanted to do real quick before we, um, let me get on the other side of the table here, um, before we get into the take it apart portion of it, um, is just kind of go over the um, the specifications on um, on what this speaker is. So it's um, three amplifiers. One, it's a stereo system, so you can set it up as a left-right plus the um, the low frequency driver as like a mono sub. Um, you can also set it up in mono. They give you a separate speaker cord to do that in addition to the um, the cords that go with the uh, the left right. So they so in this package they supply all this stuff. Here's your cord for the left and right, and then they also give us the cord to go out of the mono output up into the top box, and those things lock together um, just like they do in the uh, the standard ES503802. Um, they also give us some really nice little um, cable management cords to go around the speaker pole. Um, to be able to push in um, right here the uh, the speaker cable. And then depending on where you are located in the world, they give us a, an IEC or a 220 um, type plug to go with it. And these are pretty long, they're about 10 feet long. But let's go ahead and get into the specs of what this is. Um, usable bandwidth, they're saying minus 10 dB down, which is quite a bit. Um, 35 up to 20,000 at 6 dB down 41 to 18. So I'm thinking 3 dB down to nothing. We're probably going to be looking at about 55 um, to 60 as a usable low end range that's going to still have sufficient output that we're going to still be able to notice it and hear it. Um, max SPL at 1 meter is 132 dB. So it's really quite formidable. Um, the uh, the two little satellite boxes that come with it each have four four-inch drivers in them and like I said can be separated out um, for separate left right top boxes or coupled together. Um, the uh, 25 millimeter voice coils on them, neo, neodymium. Um, the low frequency driver is two 12 inch subwoofers. It's really not calling them low frequency drivers so we'll, we'll see how that comes out. Um, the crossover frequency is 160, 24 dB per octave, and then the horizontal dispersion is 97, so let's just call it 100, and vertical dispersion is 60. This thing does have some steering on it, though, when you couple the two little tops together that you can do a little bit angle up, angle down, or straight out, and we'll go over that in the, uh, the DSP. It is a Digipro um, Gen 4 amplifier. Um, RMS power is 1200 watts in this puppy, so it is quite a bit. Class D um, processor controller, 24 or 2856 bit, um, 48 kilohertz um, DSP limiters. It does have peak thermal and RMS limiting, and it's got the OLED display on it and the rotary encoder. Um, it does have the power connection, which is an IEC. Um, it's got some signal inputs, which we'll show you on that. They have balanced and unbalanced, three combos um, for mic instrument, mic line. It does have Bluetooth on it, so um, that's something that's kind of nice that you can set this up and run Bluetooth through it. Um, and then it's got an output on it that is uh, XLR balanced out. It's a link cable. And it, um, the housing is wooden, so the top boxes are wood and the bottom box is wood. So this is really quite a nice... Um, system. All full metal grills, the pole mount um, comes with it to be able to plop these things up and you'll see once we get into it you can get this pole mount so it goes up pretty high um, or you can just set it up just with a single extension and plop it up and just kind of depending on the size of your event use both poles or just a single pole. Um, as far as weight 
uh, sub and one top. Let's see here. Where is it? The sub is about 65 pounds and then the tops are right around eight pounds. Um, as far as power, um, they're saying that at third uh, full power um, draws 4.5 amps, but as we've seen with a lot of the DigiPro amplifiers, um, these things, if you put an amp clamp on the circuit, um, these things are very, very forgiving for power. So um, with something like this in an event for live sound or for DJ setup or something with the dual 12s in it, um, this thing is going to be absolutely amazing. So they give you a, a nice little instruction sheet. It's not too much. It won't blow your brain out going through it and show you how to um, configure it, set it up and everything um, on the instruction sheets. Um, and then also going through all of the setups with the, um, the built-in DSP and processor. Um, so with that said, um, what we're going to do is go ahead and we'll get into the top boxes first and get those apart and then get into the low frequency driver subwoofer and then what we'll do is once it's all back together we will fire some um, pink noise through it and um, take a listen and see what kind of response we can get out of it and also run some um, various frequencies through it as well to see where the thing really drops off at, uh, at what you know, dB down level is, is acceptable. So um, there you have it, dB Technologies ES1203. Okay, so we've got the top boxes and each of these little guys um, have four of the four inch drivers in them. They've got a really unique um, mechanism on them, but like it said, they are wood, um, as you can kind of see here. And this locking mechanism that's on these guys, um, they've got a couple of pins here that fit in the other box here, and then the electrical connection is made through these contacts here. Um, but these things line up, and then on the back of them, um, right here, there is a little tab that you push to unlock them once it's together. Um, but it makes a really nice um, solid locking system. But these things are just really nice. The, one of the things, that when both of these are either right side up or upside down and you get them, um, there's no labels or anything on the front of them. So it's like it's really clean. There's nothing that is going to reflect back with a product number or a product name or anything like that um, on, these, um, on these speakers. Before we get into that, um, just wanted to show you real quick. This is the other cord that they give you for doing the um, stereo connection. And this one just happens to have four conductors in it um, on a um, NL4 type connector. But I um, don't know if you can see there, but there are four different colors of wire um, on that connector um, that provide the um, two conductors for this box, two conductors for that box, and distributes the power um, for the speakers evenly um, out of the amplifier for a mono configuration and sends the left and the right up to that so that both channels are utilized um, to be able to drive those guys. So let's go ahead and get this screwed back together. But all of that comes with it. Um, one of the other things we'll show you when we close up the video um, that they're doing with this one that they have not done with the other ones, which makes it a nice little package, is that the covers for it come with it. So the cover for the base bin, low frequency driver comes with it, and then it's got covers um, for the top boxes that they fit into. And I think the poles fit in there too. I'll have to double check on that. But as you can see with the poles here that come with it, there is the one here that screws into the top of the box. And then these guys then screw together. And then this guy unscrews and can go up quite a bit as well. That's the end of the travel limit there on it. But when this thing sits on the low frequency driver, which is about as tall as this table, so it's sitting there, you can, I mean, we're off camera. Um, you can see, and then we've still got speakers that we can put on top of this thing. It really gets the speakers up in the air um, to be able to cover a, um, a larger area, an event area, 
um, with the height of these things. So you can end up just using this pole here and, in, and put up the extension on the thing or just use it like this and plop the speakers right on top of it. But um, M20 threads on it and um, it's nice and solid. They've done a good job with it. Um, the pin comes out and does go down into the pin catch so that you don't lose it and everything stays nice and tight um, with those stands or poles. So these are the speakers. Um, what I'm going to do is there's really not much to see on them. Side view. Whoops. And then the rear view on them. Um, they do have um, when cables get connected, you can end up um, because they do have the pole socket, standard pole socket on the bottom that everything just kind of fits through there and you can dress the cables down the back of these things. And um, they do tell you um, and here is the way that these guys lock together, but it just, it's like, almost like, it feels like a magnetic catch, but it's not, but they just lock together and they are tight um, when these guys go together. So um, not too heavy, you know, probably 15 pounds or so um, for the two top pieces. And then to unlock, um, once you're done with your event, you just press that one and press that one and they release from each other and you bag them up and pull down your pole, bag your low frequency driver, pull the power, you're gone, you're done. So um, we're going to go ahead and take one of these guys apart, take a look at the drivers inside and um, take a look at the construction of this box. And then what I want to get into is which is the meat of this system is the um, the low frequency box with the two um, 12 inch drivers in it. So looking forward to that. So anyway, DB Technologies ES1203. Okay, so here is our top box, um, at least with the grill off, came off really easy. There is just eight um, Allen head type screws holding it in, wood screws to go into the box and came out fairly easily. And then um, they've got a uh, kind of a nylon meshing that is glued onto the inside of this that provides a really nice um, cover so you cannot see um, these unique little four inch drivers. So these guys um, looks like they've got um, this plastic ring and assembly on here for some frequency shaping um, with that and possibly uh, high frequency phasing um, with that. Um, with the way that that is constructed on there. I've seen that on some line arrays and some things um, by DB Technologies. So that's what I'm assuming that it does um, without getting too technical in this review on, on what those are. Um, standard um, paper cone surround on them and then um, paper cone speakers on those guys. Um, full range speakers down to the crossover point um, of 160 cycles. So. Um, Good solid wood construction on these things. What we're going to do now is then uh, these are held in with Phillips screws. We're going to go ahead and get those removed and taken out and um, see what these little four inch speakers are all about in the DB Technologies ES1203. Okay, so we've done our due diligence here and pulled off the, uh, the little assemblies off the front of that guy and um, they're just held on four screws and then that holds on the speaker assembly. These guys are, um, looks like they're little neo magnets on here. Uh, let's go ahead and pull this off. Hopefully with not too much trouble. Some of these we found that um, they're just a beast to be able to get the leads off and I think this is going to be one of them that we're probably not going to be able to do without um, spending a lot of time. So um, with that said, um, standard you know, paper speaker, um, it looks like the surround on this thing is kind of a mesh, fabric mesh on this um, and then you know, standard construction, it is a little stamped uh, basket on this guy. And then everything, I'm assuming that these are probably 16 ohm drivers so that these two present you know, wired in so that all four of them basically are wired together and present a four ohm load to the amplifier um, is kind of how they've got these guys together. So as far as the construction is concerned, um, this is all 
multi-layer plywood. I can't tell what kind it is, but they've really done a nice job with it. They've used their spatter paint um, on them to really give it a nice, um, really nice looking kind of a satin finish on these things. Um, all of the uh, machining on it, I am sure, is done um, on um, CNC type milling machines to be able to get everything as precise as it is. And um, with that, there is not any dampening material inside the box, and that is probably just because there isn't any needed and uh, because the frequency response on these things does not really go low enough to warrant um, any kind of dampening material. But they do have um, brackets holding them together, which it looks like there possibly could be fly points, but I don't know. You know, it's hard to say. Um, of what their intention is. I'd have to read that a little bit more, but I think that may just be holding um, the plates on uh, on the top and bottom that these things kind of snap together and join together with and assemble with. But um, really nice, nice little speaker, very nicely done. Um, as you can tell that with the bottom socket down here, as you stand this puppy up and then put the other one up on top, um, you've got these guys at flat face. This one is angled down just a little bit. And then when you put the other one up on top, the first three are flat faced and the other one's angled up a little bit um, for, um, for coverage. But um, I'm glad to see these things being, um, being made out of wood. It just kind of takes the whole um, uh, ES series, um, entertainment series, kind of to the next level with his 1203 system and getting into really a, uh, a solid um, wood construction system. Uh, so, um, with that said, there's really not much um, for us to see um, down inside there. Um, all it is is a bunch of leads and, um, and speakers. Um, they do have it so that when it is wired through and the coupling plate on the bottom here um, connects, that whichever one is the you know, top or bottom, it ends up sending that other channel all the way through um, to this contact assembly so that it feeds up to the top box. Um, and distributes the uh, audio um, left channel, right channel um, to, the, uh, to the other speaker. So we're going to go ahead and get this back together. And then we're going to dive into the low frequency driver and also then look at the DSP and the OLED display on that thing um, for the DB Technologies ES1203. And as we are getting this back together and putting it uh, the screws back in. Um, we are going to be doing a follow-up video to this um, where we are going to take it out. In fact, we'll probably take it outdoors and um, into the parking lot and um, take the SPL meter and run some um, tracks and stuff through it and some different waveform um, frequencies and um, see what it's producing and see how far away um, from the unit that um, we can get acceptable sound out of it. So we can kind of guesstimate um, what kind of or size of audience um, as far as either live or DJ um, that a system, um, the ES1203 system is going to be capable of. Um, my guess from what we've seen in other venues and what we've done um, with some of the other manufacturers and even with the ES-503s that we, um, we have in our rental inventory, I'm guessing a pair of these things will be able to do 500 people um, pretty respectably. Um, so that's just kind of my take. Outdoors, maybe a little bit less. Um, the top box will probably end up throwing um, and carrying a little bit farther than the low frequency driver, but you can always add subs um, because of the crossover point being at 160 on this, a dedicated sub would um, really make a system like this really for dance and DJ and stuff just be totally awesome. But I may be surprised once we start running um, some audio through this and uh, get it outdoors and start turning up the levels. We've only been able to listen to it at, uh, at some lower levels at this point, but it does sound really good. So we're going to go ahead and get the uh, low frequency driver subwoofer bin um, gone through. And, um, and then, uh, like I said, we'll do a follow-up video right after this and do some live listening on the new DB Technologies ES1203. Okay, so here is the beef and the brains behind the, uh, the ES-1203. 
And as you can see, um, it is sitting on the table, but um, here is halfway point um, in one camera and then it comes up um, to our other camera up here in the top. So um, it is, um, it's a good 24 inches. Let me see what the specs say for this box. Um, the height of the sub, no, it's 26, uh, almost 27 inches tall. So um, it's nice though. They've got handles on both sides, as you can see there, and um, gives it really nice, good, uh, good carry. Um, on the top of it, let me just pull this back and we can tilt it over there a little bit. Um, you can see the, um, here we'll do it here. You can see there's a handle on the top and then there's also the, um, the M20, oh, it's over here, the M20 um, thread on it for the, um, for the speakers. So um, grill wise, um, it's got a, um, just a standard, you know, standard grill. They've kind of changed it up a little bit and um, kind of gave it a two-tone kind of punched metal look on it. It does have on the bottom of it um, some rubber feet, um, non-mar, non-scuff type stuff. And then this is the back of it and um, has the amplifier and they've really done some nice things with um, addressing and yeah, making the heat sink look a little bit sexy um, on the back of it. And then um, with our um, OLED display up there, um, we'll get this top camera so that it points down at that when we fire that thing up and um, take a look at it. But um, what we want to do now is just kind of get into it um, and pull it apart, look at the speakers that are in it, and um, also get the amplifier pulled, and then just look at the overall construction of the cabinet. It is pretty beefy. Um, I gotta say that they've done a really nice job with this ES1203, and uh, really can't wait for you to see um, on the uh, spectrograph and also smart um, kind of what this speaker can do. Um, it's pretty stinking amazing. So um, with that said, we'll get into opening up this 12-inch driver for the ES double 12-inch driver for the DB Technologies ES1203. So we got the front open, and now we can take a look and see what's inside here. Um, standard grill, um, standard kind of foam mesh that uh, DB Tech puts on uh, a lot of their low-frequency subwoofer speakers. And... Um, Gauge-wise, probably a 16-gauge steel um, with that. So nice, very good, tight form fitting. is held on with eight screws. So, and then that releases and comes off. And now you can see what we're looking at, kind of a, um, kind of a hybrid design. It has kind of the down firing and the scoop on it like their um, sub 15H and 18H does. And then we've got a forward firing 12-inch um, driver as well and um, again um, with this all wood construction there's a brace here in the middle so that the grill does not get pushed in and crunched uh, and then there is backing up here on each side so that, and down at the bottom so that the grill has something um, very nice um, and solid to mate to and then there is on the bottom of it um, a couple of fittings um, that are thread certs and then the feet go into um, thread certs as well. Um, but they've got the, um, the horn loaded um, design through this. What we're going to do is um, pull out both of these 12 inch drivers and take a look at the inside of it and um, see what this low frequency base bin subwoofer from the ES1203 DB Technologies is all about. Okay, so we kind of tilted here, crazy. Um, so we've got the 12 inch drivers out. They are identical drivers. Um, they do have ceramic magnets on them, thus the weight. And then they are um, stamped and then um, typical um, paper cone with the um, edge surround on it, uh, fabric edge surround. And um, DB Technologies drivers, OEM for them, um, I am sure, um, from AEB. And so that is what is providing the low frequency content um, held on. Each of them are held down by uh, eight screws, machine screws on thread search. So if you ever need to take them out, um, easy to do and don't have to worry about stripping out wood um, on them. 
but you can see down the center of this thing and down the the throat of it and kind of see what the construction looks like in there. It is um, braced, whoops, braced and glued. Um, lots of support inside there to stiffen it. Um, looks like about, oh, probably 13 layer plywood that um, is going into this box. Um, again, I cannot tell if it is a birch plywood or mahogany plywood on these puppies, um, but it, it's pretty solid. Um, I don't see any um, evidence of any of the plywood um, delaminating um, or anything or coming apart and I don't see any voids or anything like that in the plywood so it's it's pretty decent whether it, it is birch or um, or mahogany um, they do have um, the glued in and uh, wooden um, inserts or on here for the, um, the handles which are machined in on both sides so that they provide a nice um, seal and then they've glued and sealed around those as well on the inside so that there's not going to be any air being transferred out of the, um, the handle assemblies on it. But um, with the speakers out, amplifier is still intact, um, probably 15, now nah, probably closer to 20 pounds um, for the whole cabinet. So the rest of the weight is just the cabinet and the amplifier on back, but I can tell um, from lifting it and the amp in it that it does have a tendency to tilt back towards me which means the weight is in the amplifier towards the back. So um, with that said we're going to go ahead and get the amplifier pulled out. Again it is their G4 DigiPro so it's a lot of surface mount technology. There's not going to be a whole lot to see on it but um, we'll go ahead and open it up and take a, a look at um, the amplifier and kind of what they've done with this heat sink. Um, they've kind of, I don't know, made it kind of exciting looking rather than just the boring old fins on the back of a heat sink. Um, so let's go ahead though and move this out of the way for a second. And um, we'll just take a quick peek at one of the woofers um, on here. So, you know, just standard 12 inch woofer, paper surround. Um, not too much to see on it. Like I said, stamped basket connections. The connections on these things have been really pretty tight. Um, it's taken us a little bit to get the pluses pulled off and uh, minuses seem to come off a little bit easier. But we'll just make sure that when it goes back together that everything is nice and tight and those things are not going to vibrate off anywhere. Um, they do have a vent cooling hole through the center of this thing to vent and cool the voice coil um, once it really starts to move um, on both of these woofers. They are both, uh, they were both wired so that plus is to plus, minus is to minus, so there wasn't anything um, out of phase or backwards on these puppies. It is not a cardioid type setup unless they've done it um, in the, uh, the DSP on this, but then one of them would have to be firing backwards, wouldn't it? So anyway, um, with that said, we'll go ahead and set these aside and we're gonna go ahead and get into um, pulling this amplifier on it and taking a look at the um, kind of the brains and the beef behind the DB Technologies ES-1203. Okay, so hey, we've got the amplifier out of it now, as you can see. So um, with the amplifier out, um, 18, 20 pounds maybe for the, uh, the box. And um, they have um, put a, let's go ahead and spin this around and um, they have put a gasket around it so that the amplifier gets sealed up all the way and um, does a nice job in uh, making sure that no um, acoustic energy air is going to get out the back of it. Um, it is held on by probably 16 wood screws so it does make a really nice seal and um, as you can see with the construction of it uh, with all of the bracing um, through the inside of it here um, it is pretty tight, so no dampening material, sorry about the noise, no dampening material or anything in the box um, because it is a true low frequency and I'm assuming as we'll see in some of the frequency responses that we're going to look at, um, probably looking because of what they say it goes down to, probably gets into a subwoofer low frequency or low frequency driver category. So we'll go ahead and set this aside out of the way here and what we're going to do is take a look at the amplifier. So the amplifier um, on here, um, again, it is switch mode power supplied, 
um, Gen 4 of their uh, DigiPro. Um, outputs here, inputs for power um, is down here with the IEC connector. These are the uh, left, right, or mono only um, channel inputs. And as you can see, they've got all four wired to the mono and only two wired to the um, right speaker um, on that. And then again, the heat sink assembly, which they've done a really nice job with. It's, um, you know, it's kind of nicer than your typical straight lines that a lot of them have run um, through it and um, just kind of gives it a little bit of flair, um, in my opinion. Again, no fans. So, I mean, that is one of the things with the DigiPro series amps. Um, there is no cooling fans on these things that you're going to have to be concerned with ever going out and you don't know it and you overheat and blow the thing up not going to happen. So what they've done with this whole metal assembly and heat sink is they've taken and done the power section here. This is the amplification section. And then that raises up and gets into the DSP section, which is connected by this ribbon cable um, into the DSP and the OLED display. So with the OLED display, and the input section of this, which I'm going to go ahead and just raise up here now so that you can kind of see. Um, but this is where the Brainiac is of everything. You've got your menu selector knob, and then this is, everything's reversed. Um, I'm looking at it reversed from what you are seeing it. So that's how sometimes we have um, little issues of me getting on the wrong side of the, uh, the speaker. Um, so we've got our inputs. This is channel one, which is a mic instrument input, also XLR, and can be selected on the display between those. Um, channel two is a line mic input. Channel three is a line mic input. So if you're a small band with a couple of instruments or a couple of microphones in a single instrument or something, um, this thing is absolutely perfect that you don't even need an outboard mixer. You can control the volumes on those guys individually and, um, got a ton of capabilities to it. Then it's got an output that if you wanted to link that to another speaker um, and send signal off to another one of these things or a smaller unit or into another room or whatever, you can do that um, or off to a stage monitor possibly. So it does have a little port on it for firmware updates right here. And then once this pops up, the display pops up and you can go through and we'll show you on that as soon as we get it back together. Uh, I don't want to power it up without everything connected and um, comes with a little plastic protective cover. Once you get it, you can peel that thing off. Um, and um, it is a really nice looking um, little control system um, on it. You can adjust EQs and all sort, for, sorts of fun stuff um, on the DSP section of this. And that's where you get into being able to, with the two speakers joined together, have a little bit, probably 10 degrees up, 10 degrees down. Um, of angle adjustment electronically um, in this amplifier. So um, leads come off, go to each of the speakers here, and um, that is pretty much it. So I'm excited uh, to get this thing back together now so we can uh, run some smart on it and see what um, the traces look like on input signal levels versus what the output and the, uh, the mic is going to pick up on this thing. But um, they've just done an excellent job um, and just the construction of it, the manufacturer. And um, I think if you hear one of these things, you're going to agree with me that the audio out of this thing um, and just the sheer level of what it can do with the dual 12s in it, um, it is just absolutely amazing. So we're going to go ahead and get this thing buttoned back up and um, get it together. One of the things that um, is kind of noteworthy on this is that on the IEC connector, um, there is a fuse socket on it, depending on where you live and what your power is. They supply you with a um, 220 fuse and also a 120 fuse. If you're in the US or where 120 is being used, um, word of the wise, you need to change out the fuse from the one that comes from the factory because that is um, geared for 220, 230 volt setup. Um, so it, it'll end up, um, not that you would blow it, but it's just going to be one of those where it's not going to blow as quickly um, if there were a problem um, to protect the, uh, the power section on the amplifier. So um, good job, and um, we're going to go ahead and get this back together and uh, set up the smart on it and take a look at some traces. 
Okay, we're just about back together with this thing and getting the grill ready to go back on. Um, one of the things that I, you know, kind of wanted to mention, we are, you know, as you know, we're dealers for DB Technologies and um, sell quite a bit of their, um, their speaker line and accessories and also um, put it in on installs that we do. We are licensed contractors as well. Um, but one of the things that kind of differentiates us and separates us from everybody else um, that is a dealer, in my opinion, or is doing videos on YouTube trying to sell boxes. Um, we are into it for more than just selling you a speaker box. We are here for support um, down the road should anything happen. Um, our videos have been used for reference to take stuff apart where people have had trouble with it. We talk to them over the phone, watch the video. It'll show you how to take the speaker apart, get to where you need to see. I've had a guy the other day in Colorado, um, had some loose hardware inside one of his line array speakers um, that he could hear it rattling. And he was able to refer to our video. I made some clips on it um, that I texted him and he was able to open the thing up take a look at it, find that a couple of the, um, the loctite nuts had backed off somehow and were vibrating. And um, he was thinking, you know, that he was gonna have to, you know, take the whole thing apart and get new screws or send the thing back for um, repair. And um, he was able to fix it and um, texted me back and was so appreciative of um, our service that we provide because it is just more than selling speaker boxes. I've had guys call me where we've been out on production events um, and have taken the call and have helped them configure things over the phone, um, talked about setup issues, problems, things that they've had um, with some of their gigs. So um, when you're considering, you know, purchasing speakers, you know, really give us the first call. Um, our pricing is hard to beat um, and we are here for you aftermarket. Um, and it's not just with DB Technologies, it's the full myriad of equipment that we sell, lighting and mixers and speakers and cabling and video equipment and projectors and, you know, processors and video processors and everything. So. Um, just wanted to throw that out there. You know, I've been seeing, you know, people copying what we are doing or attempting to copy what we are doing um, with videos and um, be assured that um, our aftermarket support, even our support prior to you purchasing, um, if you have any questions, you can get a hold of us um, on YouTube and messages through that. You can get a hold of us on Facebook. You can email us through our website. Um, you can call us on the phone, 209-832-8023. We're happy to talk to you about what is going to work, what isn't going to work, what you're doing, whether you're a DJ, whether you're live sound, a small band, acoustic band, whatever the case may be. Um, we use this stuff. Um, we also sell it. Um, but we have used a lot of this stuff in our rental inventory. So um, we know what it is. We know what it can do where others may just be trying to push boxes. So my soapbox for the day. We're going to go ahead and get this back together and um, get it fired up and put some noise through it. Just another quick note. The nice thing about this is that there are no labels or anything on it. The only place that you see on this speaker that it is by DB Technologies is here. And then as we rotate it around, you can see the model number that they do um, up at the top that it's the ES-1203. It's only on one side. So it just makes a nice clean package, especially like for corporate work. Um, you don't have a bunch of shiny labels if they've got lights on the stage or anything like that reflecting back with anything. So um, DB Technologies, good job. So um, with that, we're going to go ahead and run some noise. Well, as we are waiting for some new Windows drivers to download so we can run the smart, I hate Windows. Um, I was just going to go through and show you um, the OLED display here and um, show you what that looks like when it fires up. Right now we're off and what we're going to do is just turn it up and, or turn it on and it boots up and loads the firmware. And we've got the speaker connected here and powered up. So now it comes up with a menu and it shows you um, what the configuration is that we've got it into a stack mode and it is straight out. So let's maybe zoom in just a little bit more if we can. Nope, we are zoomed in all the way. Sorry. 
So with that then you can go in and set channel one and whether it's mic or instrument. Um, let's clean up this display a little bit here, get some gunk off of it. Set the gain level of it. It's set up right now so that it's zero and um, you can adjust that. You can adjust EQ, high pass filter, anti-feedback filter, and you can do that on um, each of those and then you can see how much of this also feeds to the aux mix output on it um, as well um, through the display. So we'll end up going back with that and then we'll go little home button here that will get us back home. And so if we scroll all the way over here, you can see that that's lit up the system and then you can see, maybe you can't, but it's showing that we've got a little bit of tilt down, straight out, a little bit of tilt up. And so we select that and hit the enter button on it. And then we can go over, set up Bluetooth, set up any of the other channels, get into the main menu, um, system equalization. You can go through and set up um, low frequency, mid frequency um, gain and also the frequency response. So if we go here, we can go all the way down. I mean, it just dials through everything um, that you can just set, you know, wherever you want to go on it and then set the gain for it um, as well. Get that back down to a thousand. High frequency is going to be more of a kind of a shelving up and down um, on it and low frequency probably going to be the same. You got a little bit of shelving on that, you know, as well up and down. Um, the mid range is really where you can kind of tailor things to specific um, specific frequencies. We're going to go back on that then. Um, you can save uh, any of the setups. Um, password protection, you can set a password so they can't get into the Bluetooth on it. Um, standby time so that you can set how long that if it doesn't have any signal on it, the thing will just automatically shut down and um, they've really done a nice you know nice job on it and then you just hit exit and it goes back to the display and you're up and running ready to go um, down at the bottom of it as we showed you earlier it's got the settings um, here for the left and the right so if we deployed left and right speakers it's just one goes into the right one goes into the left and put one up on this, one up on a stand, and you've got kind of a stereo sound um, out of it as well. But um, really nice job um, with what they've done. And it looks like our software drivers are just about installed. So we'll go ahead and um, get some noise running through this thing. Okay, sorry my big face is in the way here. Um, after waiting and waiting for the Windows computer to boot up, it just wouldn't. So I went and got the Mac and booted the Mac up and had everything up and running in like two minutes. So that's what we're looking at now. Um, it wants to download Adobe and to heck with that. So um, what we're going to look at, I've got the measurement mic um, maybe three feet away. I'm going to move it back just a little bit more so that we got something that is not too, too close. And it is kind of pointing on access to the base bin. Um, you can kind of see it here. And the top box, I can't set the thing with the top box up and capture everything I want. So I've got it um, by the side, got a brewski here. So, um, and what we're gonna do is just take some readings with it and kind of see where um, frequency ends up being on it. So what I'm going to do is start up the noise generator and um, get some pink noise going. And then what we'll do is turn on the generator, which you can see in the background um, as being kind of the reddish pink color and foreground of what the microphone here is picking up um, in the green. And what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and turn the, um, the pink noise generator up. And kind of get the speaker excited. 
Okay, so here is the RTA. It's picking up my voice, doing what it needs to do. You can see kind of where things are at on spectrograph. Um, once we turn the signal generator on, you can see what it's doing, picking up the microphone. And if we pull this down, you can kind of see what the signal generator is doing and the frequency response down here at 63. Um, we're going to go ahead and turn on the generator in the background, what the speaker is doing in the foreground, and you can see kind of what I was saying that if we look at what is really being produced, and I'm going to just go ahead and turn up the gain here. But as I said, when we were looking at the specs, they had rated that at 10 dB down and 6 dB down. Um, really what is kind of usable on this thing is really at about 63 to 70 where you're going to get sufficient low end volume out of it. You can still get those kind of tones out of it and frequency um, below 63 out of it, but it is going to be at um, half volume of what that is and then once it gets down to the 40 and 35, it is going to be half again um, of what that volume is. And that is kind of what the, uh, the 10 dB down um, is in and up being. So it, it is substantially lower in volume, even though it will reproduce it. Um, and that's why, you know, being that this is, even though it's a dual 12 inch, it'll still, still do a pretty good job at 63. Um, what we'll do is find out once we get it out into the um, kind of the real world thing of what's going on. Um, sweep wise, let's do some pink sweeps. Let me turn this down so it doesn't blow my freaking brain out. But you can see that it is, you know, a little bit lower than 63 here, maybe down to 50. Let's see where that is. Uh, uh, that's down into right around 50, that it's still doing something, but it's got more energy up in the 63 range. We did calibrate the microphone, so at the three, um, three feet that we're at right now, these are actual um, SPL readings that we're getting out of it. And um, let's see if we can just do some single tones. So we're down at 54. So it is doing 54, let's see, but it is quite a ways down. It's still, you can see that it's reproducing 40. Let's go back. Let's do something here. Let's go back to 60. So you can see with that right now that we're, per, we're not going to touch the gain or anything. And we're reproducing 60 at about the 3 feet at almost 99 dB. We're going to drop that down now. So now we're going down to 55, 52, 50. Look at that though. We rolled off 16 dB. That's a lot of juice. And now if we take it down to 45, you can see how much down it's got. It's still reproducing it. You can see that it's reproducing 45. We're going to take it down to 40. and the volume is so far down on it. Yeah, it just, I'm just not getting anything out of it as far as our signal generator. So we'll, we'll come back up, reproduces that, reproduces 60 quite nicely as we start going up 70. Let's go back to 60. And we'll get our 99 dB back here. And then we'll go up from there. So 70. It seems, let's go back down to 60. Yeah, it reproduces six 
at a pretty steady 99 as we go up. The 70, it loses a little bit. But the minute we go beyond 70, look at the gain we're getting out of it, man. It's just like it's going nuts. So that's around kind of kick drum frequency, 80, 75 to 90. And then as we start going up from there, look at the SPL that we're really getting out of it. So we'll shut that off. So that kind of gives you an idea of what the speaker does. It's fairly flat, you know, as we do the, um, the pink noise. Bring that down a little bit, but you can see, you know, down at 63, you can see the pink noise is generating all the way across the spectrum, you know, with the, the waveforms that it's sending out. But you can see at 63, it does start to fall off. It starts to come up at about 100, where we were getting, you know, good level. And then um, it does produce from about 125 up pretty good um, through the 500 band. And then, you know, tracks fairly good um, all the way up. And that may just be because of the placement of our, um, our microphone. Um, what we are going to do, though, like I said, is um, end up taking this and doing a outside video. Um, of it and um, turn the thing up and see what kind of levels we're going to get out of it and um, put it out in the parking lot and play with it a little bit. But um, that is kind of our findings on the DB Technologies um, ES1203. Uh, well, that pretty much wraps us up for the DB Technologies ES1203. Um, what I've done is I brought the, um, <clears throat> excuse me, the bags up covers and uh, put them on the speakers, kind of show you what you get. They do some nice um, padded, um, kind of a canvas kind of bag. Um, the one here holds the top speakers and uh, looks like there's enough room up at the top that you could put in all of the cords, uh, power cords and speaker cords and everything. Flaps on the sides that you can reach in for the handles um, on this unit, as you can see right there. Same thing up on the top. There is um, a strap on it that you could end up um, stra strapping the poles, I think, to the top of the, uh, the sub and then um, get a little dolly or a cart for it and you are off and running. Um, weight of the thing at uh, 65 pounds or so. Um, it is fairly easy to transport. 65 pounds is not too bad. Um, I'm not that strong and kind of short, as you can see in the videos. So, I mean, it wasn't hard for me to get it up onto this table. Um, so, not too bad if you're um, concerned about weight or anything like that. So, um, if you have any more questions on the ES-1203, um, be sure to watch for our, our next video um, that we're going to have on this um, when we do some stuff out in the parking lot. Um, you won't be able to really tell how it sounds, and that's why we didn't run any music through it tonight. But you, at least you can see that there's a really good representation of the frequency response of what this unit will do. What we're going to do is just check some SPLs at some different distances, like 25 feet, 50 feet, 100 feet, and things like that, and see where um, frequencies start to um, taper off um, on the unit and how well it does and with you know high SPLs. So. Um, with that said, that wraps up the DB Technologies ES-1203. Like I said, email us or you can call us on the phone, area code 209-832-8023. On the web, it is www.trinityprosound.com. And if you want to email us, it's info at trinityprosound.com. You can always reach out 209-832-8023. Um, and give us a direct call. We'd be happy to talk to you. Um, look us up on Facebook. Um, we've got a Facebook page, um, Trinity Productions. And um, I'd like to thank everybody there for watching. And um, stay tuned uh, that we will be coming up with the next video shortly. Um, getting ready to do one on the IG2T by DB Technologies. Again, Trinity Productions, trinityprosound.com. Thank you for watching. Thanks for subscribing.